there are some miracles that God has been trying to get to some of us who are in here. And I want to give you this simple instruction. Get out of the way of your miracle. All right? Get out of the way of your miracle. Because what is happening is God is like, I want to give this to you. And we get in the way, I don't know if he really wants me to have it. You know, I'm not sure. You know, Lord, I just hope. And, and the Holy Spirit just showed me this, that we imagine which way God's going to do it. And that blocks God from the way he really wants to do it. We have to really and truly and sincerely say, Lord, however you want to do it is completely fine with me. Y'all don't seem to be too happy about that. Well, have your way, Lord. (laughs) And that usually means, I don't really believe you're going to do anything anyway, but I'll just go ahead and say it. Get out, let's get out of the way of our miracle. All right, let's get out of the way and say, okay, Father, all right, I tried it my way. I wanted you to do it this way. I wanted you to do it that way, but it really didn't work. So, all right, however you do it, I'm fine now. Okay, can we get there? Say, however you really want to do it, I'm fine. I thought it was going to happen this way. I tried to get you to do it. Whatever you want to do, I'm, I'm cool. Just let God do it. We think we're waiting on God. God's like, no, no, no. I'm waiting on y'all. Yeah, I'm waiting on y'all. You're not waiting on me. And do you know for some of us, that's all we needed? That's all we needed. So, okay. Okay. Cool. Do it your way. You ain't going to do it my way. That's clear. So, okay, you win. Your way. Then we're going to have to deal with his time. Me too. I I don't agree with God's timing all the time. I'm telling you. I just don't. So, I had to humble myself and say, well, you ain't going to do it till you want to do it anyway. Amen. So I might as well. Yeah, right, right. And then when it happens, I repent because I'm like, dog, this was the perfect time. Yeah. This was, I see why you waited. I'm not bad. <laughs> yeah, let God, right. we, you know, I always say this, we gave God our lives so we don't have our lives anymore. But we always act like we still have our lives. I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to do that. Like We don't have our lives anymore. We got to do whatever he says do. And we get to do it. Okay, y'all going. All right. I'll just go with this. Authorized to witness is what I'll be teaching today. I'm going to talk about being authorized to witness. Okay. Now, it might be gloomy to y'all outside, but let me explain. Let me explain what happens here. The rain comes to make things beautiful later. All right? So don't get so gloomy because it's raining outside. As a matter of fact, when the Lord blessed us to buy this building... We specifically, well, this is what I really wanted, and it, I thank God it went forth, that there are no windows in here, so we won't be able to see lightning or darkness. This room was designed for this purpose, just white. <laughs> Authority equals power. All right? When we talk about being authorized, we're talking about authority. Given authority. Authority equals power and 
power equals authority. When we talk about the power of God, we're talking about his authority. When we are talking about Jesus gave us power, we're talking about the fact that Jesus gave us authority. Jesus gave us power over all the power of the devil, all the power of the enemy. Which says two things to me. Number one, the devil has power. Right. That'd be the devil, you have no power. That's a lie. Jesus said the devil has power. But we have power, authority over all the power, authority of the devil. Devils have authority to do things to us. And we have authority to say, get your behind off my family. We have authority over his authority. Oh, y'all don't talk to the devil like that? Get your behind off my name? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's not a cuss word, <laughs> to be clear. Psalm 62, 11. You must know this like any other verse in the Bible. You have to, have to, have to know this. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. Now, this hasn't been used a whole lot in the Bible, God has spoken once, or this one spoke once, twice, twice, twice have I heard this. But back in the Bible days, this was their way of saying, I hear this over and over and over and over again. That's what we would say. But they say it this way, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this. That what? Power belongeth to God. ETH on the end of a word means what? Continue. Power continues to belong to God. That's very important. I don't care what authority is what. It belongs to God. Authority belongs to God. Yes. I don't care if we're talking about police officers, President of the United States, or Christian casting out a devil or casting out a blind demon, doesn't matter. Power belongs to God. Authority belongs to God. Power here means might, great strength. Great strength. Please know that the authority that we have is strong. Is strong. Greatly strong. Ooh, the devil been bothering me. He been bothering me. He was just messing with me. Just messing with my mind. Just messing. Okay, cool. You have greater strength than the devil. Use it. That's the problem. We don't use what we have. If there's such thing as Superman, it's like Superman being afraid of a bullet. Come on. Why are we afraid? It's literally nothing to fear. Not even fear itself. The fastest and most assured way to access power, to get power, is to get authorized usage of power from God. Quickest way to get power. You want to have power with God. Everybody that would just love, I just, I just want power with God. I want to be able to say devil go and he goes. I want to be able to do this. I want to be quickest way is to get authorized usage of power from God. I'm going to teach you how to get that today. So you can get it. All power belongs to God. Quickest way to get it. Be authorized. Just that simple. Once he authorizes you, you can do it. Sometimes my little four-year-old Joshua will tell our 20-month-old Amaya, come here. And she keeps doing whatever she wants to do. And then if he says, Amaya, daddy said come here, there's a different story. (laughs) She hears some authority up in there. That was not there before. And so then she comes to pitter-pattering. 
we have to understand that when God authorizes us, when God authorizes, you see, if you told the devil to do stuff and he didn't do it, get God to authorize you. Tell him again. And let's see what happens now. Let me give you a secret in dealing with any spirits. Let me give you a secret. Please be angry for real. I'm going to teach you a secret that you need to know. Anger is a power that God uses against devils. Don't just say, devil, now leave here. No, no, no. Be angry for real. I'm even saying it like this. If you're not really angry, don't come against the devil. I said, that's why it hasn't been working. That's exactly why it hasn't been working. Because if you're not really angry, the devil knows. Can you tell when somebody's angry even if they don't say anything? Can you sense it? I'm asking, can y'all sense when somebody's angry? You're working about somebody or somebody in your family. You can tell, right? Don't you know that that type of an authority? Because that I am authorized to be angry because you already know and you know how they act and you can sense it. Devils are the same way. They can tell when you're not really angry. <laughs> and so they don't do anything. But when you are authorized, oh, that's a book. When you're authorized and angry. Yes. 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 Somebody said, now preaching, are you sure we're supposed to get angry? Ain't that a sin? The Bible says, anger, but sin not. Don't get angry and curse, now you done sin. Don't get angry and then slap somebody, it hits and now you sin. Okay? But be angry and sin up because you see. People who war don't war because, well, they said to shoot, so poing, bow, bow, bow. They're angry. They've been hyped up. We coming to get them. We going to get them. In the army, they are hyped. They are truly angry. They are coming against the enemy. You ever seen anybody on the movies or even in real life? I'm going to shoot you, pal. (laughs) Oh, you going to mess me? Okay, pal. Doesn't work. You got to have something to pull the trigger with. Amen. Something has to make you pull that trigger. I'm telling you. All right. Okay, all right. What about Jesus? How often did he get angry in the Bible and boom, miracles? Miracles, miracles, miracles. Oh, now you got it. That's all I had to say. Okay, cool. Like, why did I get me? I said this. I said, Jesus. Okay, now, Romans 13 1, let every person be loyally subject to the governing civil authorities. We're talking about people in government now. For there is no authority except from God. By his permission, his sanction, and those that exist do so by God's appointment. You don't like your president? You don't like your mayor? You don't like your whomever? Uh, God appointed them. Now, if I go deeper, the word of the Lord says that if you resist them, you're in trouble with God. Um, Trump-hating post. 
to my messenger on Facebook. And so I sent them that scripture. It talked about if you don't accept who God has appointed, then um, you're going to be in trouble with him. And they're like, oh, wow. I like, yeah, right? <laughs> but they won't send me no more stuff like that. God authorized those in positions they hold in governmental systems. Why? For his usage. Yes. You want to know why people get into power, into authority? Because God wants to use them yes. a particular way. God said, no, I want him to be it because I know I can use him to do what I need to be done. I don't like the way Trump talks. God may literally be saying, I don't too much care for the way he talks either. But um, America was in financial trouble. And this is a billionaire who knows money. So I put him there to, to help the money out for America. I don't like him. Look at your 401k the day after he was elected. Mine went up about $400 overnight. Had never, ever, ever done that. Thank you for Donald Trump, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Unemployment rate, the lowest it's ever been. If you can't get a job now, it's because you're just sitting home asking God to drop it in your kitchen. <laughs> Literally the lowest it's ever been. Why? Because Donald Trump said, okay, cool. All y'all big time billion dollar uh, companies. Tell you what, you're going to keep all those jobs overseas because you can pay them little of nothing? No problem. I'm going to, I'm going to tax you with this. You're going to do it. They said, okay, listen, bring all those jobs back to America. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. All right. I mean, that's just the short end of it, you know. I guess I like, well, I got a job, so it doesn't matter to me. I'm, thank the Lord. I give God the glory. Yes. And who did God use? Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not, here, uh, I'm not here being a political uh, front for, for Donald Trump now. I'm just talking about y'all. Y'all's blessings. Uh, let me flip it to the next one. Maybe y'all will get it this time. Exodus 14 and 8. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Yes, Who was Pharaoh? King of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. And that made Pharaoh mad. God had already hardened. God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And the Bible says that several times. Why in the world would Pharaoh just treat the children of Israel like this and hold them captive. God hardened his heart. Yes. All those signs that, 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 that God used Moses to bring and, and he still wouldn't let the people of Israel go. God hardened his heart. Now, when you look at this, this was the time that Israel was about to be free because Pharaoh's son died and all the firstborn of Israel, they died. You, you remember that story. And so he pursued after the children of Israel because they went out with a high hand. Now, that is a phrase like, hey, we out of here. We out of here. Which speaks of a pride. It speaks of a pride. And so God hardens Pharaoh's heart. Like, oh, y'all going to leave out of here. Like, all proud and stuff. Okay, cool. No problem. No problem. We going to come. Why did God harden Pharaoh's heart to go after the children of Israel? Why? Because God wanted every one of them drowned in the sea. 
Because that's exactly what happened. They went after her. And they're like, Pharaoh and his army is behind us. Now the Red Sea is before us. Moses, hold out your rod. Held it out. Now, I know in the movies, it, it like started right here and then split and went. And then they, no, that's not how it happened. The Bible says the wind blew all night. And it started from the other side and came all the way to where they were. So you see, a lot of things that, and I've said this before, a lot of things that we have prayed about, we're looking for God to work right where we are. No, that's not how God works. He starts on the other side. Sometimes his wind has to blow all night long until it gets to us. That is why we're not supposed to walk by, but we walk by faith, not by sight. It doesn't look like he's doing anything. No, we don't do that. I'm, I'm just, I'm in between a rock and a hard place. God, come on now. God, like, I got you. I got you on the other side. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's coming to you. So, anyway, here it comes, the wind. And then they walk through, the Bible says, on dry yes. ground. Dry ground. They walk, all of them walk through. And then, here comes Pharaoh and his army coming to pursue them, coming after them because God hardened his heart. So I'm coming to get y'all. So then they get in the midst of the sea. <sighs> They're all drowned. All drowned. So we just never, ever, ever know why certain people are in power and why God uses them a certain way. We have to just wait. Yes. I'm not saying God going to kill Donald Trump. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, God forbid the blood of Jesus prevails against it. I'm talking about whenever people are in authority over you and you're wondering why. But just wait. Just wait. Yes, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. The Lord just gave me a word for somebody here. You're going to outlast them. You're going to outlast them. Somebody bothering y'all? You're going to outlast them. And if somebody in particular, somebody here, or maybe you're watching or listening, but the Holy Spirit is saying somebody is trying to get rid of you. They're not just being mean. They're not just being however they're being towards you, trying to get rid of you. But God said, you're going to outlast them. You're going to outlast them. Thank you, Lord. You see, Proverbs 21 and 1 says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water, and he turneth it whithersoever he will. However God wants to turn the king's heart, he can do it. Why my boss so mean? Why my supervisor so this? Why that, 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 that? God, like, I got the heart. I'm turning it like that. I'm making them do this, make them do that, make them do that. Why? Because I, I know it's in their heart. So I'm going to turn it. I'm going to get all out that's in there. And then that's going to lead them to what they're going to have to face. Just let it happen. Yes. Pray for them. Because see, if they turn, hallelujah, Lord do it, Jesus. If they turn their hearts towards God, hallelujah. now we have a different story. Yes. They may have authority and power over you, hired you, tell you what to do, tell you what you cannot do, but understand who has their heart. Yes, Lord. Yes. Understand it. Now, Acts 19, 11 through 17. I want to kind of briefly go through this. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. I want to note here again that power belongs to God. 
who works the miracles and he authorizes us to execute his works. So God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. God is the one who wrought the miracles. He used Paul to do a lot of miracles. But God is the one who does the miracles. He uses our hands. He uses our mouths. He uses us. But God is the one who does it. Because power belongs to him. Authority belongs to God. Please remember that. Now, one of the miracles, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs. Or aprons that he literally had on. And they took those handkerchiefs, they took those aprons from Paul, and they took them to the people that had diseases. And diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Isn't that something from a piece of cloth that was on Paul's body? Took it to people who were sick, people who had demons in them, put it on them, demons left from a handkerchief. Somebody cut up your t-shirt and take it to somebody and they're healed. How is Paul more different from you? That's seriously. I know know the way I said it was kind of comical and that's fine. But in all seriousness, somebody take your shirt, cut it up and say, huh, just take this. Take this and put it on them. How in the world is Paul so much more different than we are? He had the same faith in God that we can have. Remember, we have to have faith and believe. You have to have faith in God and then believe in yourself. I just don't feel worthy enough. God's like, it's not about you feeling worthy. I made you. I authorized you. We have to believe God. Have faith in him. And know what he's saying about us and believe in ourselves. Not believe in our own power, but believe he has authorized me and I can do this. I can get this done for God. This is Bible. I'm not making it up. Somebody said, well, I mean, that was just Paul. But then cool. Maybe just your shoe. Huh? Just put my shoes on. You'll be all right. Maybe it's your coat. Say, huh, just put on my coat. You'll be fine. Oh. Y'all, come on. Come on with me. Let's have faith together. Let's believe. Yes. Yes. So I say, ain't nobody going to want to put on my shoe. Ain't nobody want to put on my coat. (sighs) Come on. Come on, man, woman, boy, girl. Let's go. Yes. Lay hands. Yes. yes. Heal them. Hey God. Get them yes. done. Yes. All right. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. When God authorizes work, success from his perspective is always the outcome. Yeah. When God authorizes work, when God tells you what to do, it's always going to be successful. Thank always. You. Always from his perspective. What do you mean his perspective? One that comes to mind now is when Jesus raised that little girl from the dead. And then he said, now how many of you know that is success to raise somebody from the dead? That right is success. But then... Jesus said, give her something to eat so she could get her strength back. Now, I would think if you got power to raise her from the dead, you can raise her back from the dead and be strong at the same time. Yes. <laughs> you ain't got these. She raised from the dead. And, oh, I'm so full. <laughs> from God's perspective, raising her from the dead was the success. Now give her something to eat because she's hungry. Why didn't you miraculously fill her belly with some... No, 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 no. My plan was just to raise her. That's it. That's why we have to get out of the way of our miracle because we 
we, we go too far. We need to go right where God is and leave it alone. Why you ain't do this and this? God said, because I only said I'd do this. You can do that. I mean, I know that God can heal a headache. I already know that. He's, he's done it through my life. He's even done it with me praying for myself. But we got Advil, Excedrin, Tylenol gel caps. Look in the Bible. Almost every single miracle detailed in the Bible is something that even today we cannot heal. We cannot cure. If you can go and just buy something right off the counter, $5.67 and take it and a couple hours is gone or next day is gone, huh? cool. God really deals with the hard stuff. Like I said, he can heal the little minor things. Of course, I know it. But God likes the hard stuff. Like, can't nobody do this but me. So let's raise some people from the dead. Kind of hard to get somebody saved around your way, where you work. Let something happen that they know can't nobody do this but God. And then you show the power of God. I bet they're going to get saved then. How you do that? Lift your hands, close your eyes. <laughs> Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Because it's by the power of Jesus that I did what you just saw me do. This one lady joined this church. She said, because I had never seen nobody get people healed as fast as you do. So I want to learn how to do it. People want to see the power of God. They want to. We have to show them. Gracious day. When I was working at the credit union, that's what I did. Be healed. Be healed. Do it where you work, where you go to school. Yeah. Can't have prayer in school. That's a lie. That's not the law. Me, an outsider, cannot come into the school and do anything, but all the kids can lay hands, speak in tongues, prophesy, do all they want. Can't do a thing. If you're a full-time student in a public school, you can do whatever you want. The law, Supreme Court, said outsiders can't come in during normal school hours. That is why, what's the, 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 the good news club comes in after school and they can do what they want to Know the law. All right. What happens when an unauthorized usage of God's name occurs? Ooh, that's perfect. I like your response. Perfect to what we're about to look at. You probably already know Acts 19, 11 through 17. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus who Paul preached. So these exorcists then heard Paul preach and cast out demons and stuff like that. So now, they're unauthorized. They're not saved. They don't belong to Jesus. So they're going to call over. <laughs> hey, y'all over there that, that, that's full of demons, come here. <laughs> that's the Bible. That's what it says. They called over. Hey, y'all. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. This is what the Bible says. Called them over. And there were seven sons of one, Sceba, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. He was chief of the priests. And these are his sons. My daddy will preach it. Man, Lord, protect all of our children. <laughs> and the evil spirit answered and said, now here, here you go over there. He said, come on. In the name of Jesus that Paul preached, come out. 
So the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Who are you? You're not authorized to cast us out. Verse 16, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. One man, how many was it? Seven. One man leaped on seven of them. And overcame them, beat up seven people full of demons. <sighs> and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Beat them out their clothes. One man beat seven men out of their clothes. <laughs> and they ran out of the house. <laughs> <sighs> Do you know every single one of us in here could have casted that devil right on out? Could have casted that devil right on out. But these seven couldn't do it because they were not authorized. You can use the name all you want. But if you're not authorized, they're going to beat you naked. <laughs> You're going to call me over and try to cast me out with your unauthorized self. Okay. And this was known to all. Hold on. This was known to all the Jews. Like, child, you heard about the seven men running out of that house naked and beat slap up? This was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. Fear fell, but the name of the Lord was magnified. Yes. But nobody cast them out. How was the name of the Lord magnified? Because everybody can't use that name. It didn't say the Lord was magnified. The name of the Lord was magnified. Like, you just can't, anybody just can't use that name. They're not authorized. So you can pray all you want in Jesus' name. If you don't represent him, you cannot pray in his name. That speaks of a representation. I'm coming in his name. I said it before. You can have a knock on the door. Who is it? So and so, so and so, and vacuum cleaner sales. No, thank you. Another knock on the door. Who is it? Orangeburg County Sheriff Department. Oh, fun. Yes, sir. The name they come in has the authority. You ain't trying to sell vacuums? Bye. Tell them bye. Are you from the police department? Yes, sir. What's happening? What's going on? Authority. That's the difference between somebody not authorized and y'all who are authorized. Reverential fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom for those who are authorized. For those authorized, as you see here, fear fell on them all. That's a reverential fear of the Lord. Reverential fear of the Lord. I revere you. That's where you get the name reverend from. The reason why people call preachers reverend is because they reverence the God in their lives. That's where that comes from. The reverential fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom for those authorized. I know how holy, awesome, and powerful God is. Not just God, but everything he wants, everything he says, how he thinks, everything about what you have for my life in the lives of everybody else. I honor that. 
I don't ever want to do anything outside of what you want. I have that type of fear. Oh yeah, he'll authorize those. The fear of the Lord, Proverbs 1 and 7, is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. All right, everybody do this, and this you cannot do. And so, <laughs> child, please, you're a fool. You despise wisdom and instruction. Don't get quiet on me. I didn't write it. <laughs> That's the Bible. I said, Lord, forgive me for being a fool. Because I promise you, somebody sure told me to do so and so. I'm like, Phew. who do they think they're talking to? You despise wisdom and instruction. I'm trying to tell you what to do. That ain't going to work. Forget it. I don't know why I even came to you. You're a fool. Let's not be fools. I've been a fool. Like foot. I wish I would have listened. I wish I would have listened. Amen? Amen. You know, most times it's, it's easy for people to take it when you call yourself a fool. And stuff. Okay. <laughs> Psalms 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. The beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Yes. Know this, that if you understand God, you'll always obey him. Always. Yes. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. If you're, if you're wondering about his commandments, you don't have a good understanding. If you're contemplating possibly doing God's will, you don't have a good understanding. It's not until you actually get in it and do God's will that you are Actually, I got it. Yes. I got it. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I'm going to do it, Lord, because if I don't, I have a rever very reverential fear of you. Yes. Yes. And I want to do whatever you want because I don't want you angry with me at all. I've seen your anger and what you've done to folk. I don't want to be in that category. Lord, I humble myself to you. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. God said, you're going to get a good understanding. More people will honor, respect, and reverentially fear God when we step into our positions and release the power of God's kingdom as our witness for the church and for the world to experience. We have to step into our position and say, okay, all right. Like I told you before, we have to say, uh-uh, no. Lord, I'm just looking for the opportunity to release your power, you. release your authority. My goodness gracious. Pastor Hayward sent me uh, the trailer for this movie called Messiah, or is it a TV series on Netflix called Messiah, where it's like Jesus living today, and it's like, I'm like, and he was like, so what do you think about this? I said, well, number one, it's unscriptural, and number two, it saddens me, because the world has to come up with something like this because we're not producing enough of God's power for them to just display that. Hmm. Just display that. <clears throat> display the miracles that God is already using us to display. Now they have to have some TV series called The Messiah to show him doing miracles and doing things or whatever in today's time. Because in today's time, we aren't doing enough for it to be broadcasted. For them to report on it. We call ourselves Christians with the word Christ in it. And Christ means the anointing, 
which what is uh, what God uses to empower us to do great things because we aren't doing much they have to make stuff up have to make stuff up we are authorized to witness you see when we understand that we're supposed to bring forth God's authority and power yes. to be a witness for God to be a witness for Jesus Christ and not to make ourselves look good or it might not work if I lay hands. It might not work if I cut up my shirt and say, huh, take that to him. I say, ain't nobody want that. Listen, you sick enough? Give me shirt, give me... You can give me that old popsicle stick. I don't care what it is. Whatever God wants to... I am tired of this pain. I'm tired of this whatever... But we just have to be authorized by God. Yes. Have to be. Because this is what he wants. He wants to work. And the church needs it. Yes. A lot of the church, they don't even believe in divine healing. Been Christians for decades don't believe in all that and they enhance healing stuff. And I guess they don't. Never seen it. Because we're not doing it. Don't nobody know the future but God. Yes, he tells us the future. You don't have to be a prophet, an apostle, a pastor. You could be just sitting there and just be a very nice church member and God can use you to prophesy to people at different times. Say, this is what God showed me about your future. Denzel Washington was in his mama's beauty shop. And his old lady kept looking at him. She was under the hair dryer, just kept looking at him. He noticed her. Oh, he just keep looking at me. He was, of course, young, young, young. And she said, boy, I got a prophecy for you. You're going to travel all over the world and you're going to be singing. You're going to talk to millions. He's traveled all over the world and through his movies, he's literally spoken to millions. Millions. She wasn't no great evangelist somewhere. I'm saying God can give you what people need so they can understand. Denzel has, has followed Denzel. He's followed God. I remember when his son was real, real, real young and a friend of mine was real close to the family and said, you need to hear his little boy pray just over the meal. That little boy goes in. The whole family is just for God like that. That's a witness. And when you hear that, like, oh, I didn't know Denzel. That's a witness. That's who we are. We're supposed to be a witness for Jesus. Just like that. Our whole lives, everything we do. Because we are authorized to witness. Every single one of us. Authorized. You have the authority. Family is the hardest ones to deal with. Great, they good. Let them see a miracle through the works of your hands. God is ready to use you so your family can see. Mm. So the church can see. So the world can see. All right, this week, that's y'all's homework. Or work, work. You can do it at home, do it at work, Walmart, wherever. Let somebody see the power of God. See somebody in a wheelchair, ask God, Father, have you authorized me to get that done? I'm serious. Very, very, very serious. See somebody walking. Ask God, am I authorized to take care of that? that? Will you authorize me to take care of that? I was at work and our assistant manager, she was walking around like this. I went in the office, I said, what's wrong? She said, my back. I said, okay, let me help the people up there and I'll come back and take care of it. Went back there, prayed for her. She was literally healed immediately and fine. Who am I? I'm a teller. 
at a credit union. Okay. So I'm a pastor. Good. God told me. I literally didn't even mean that to be funny. Oh. As a pastor, God told me to preach. And he said, those, it's in Mark chapter 16, those who you preach to, if they believe, they will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Not me as a pastor. I'm not pastor of Edisto Federal Credit Union. I was a worker. Just a teller. That's it. Well, they called me a clerk because they gave me 10 different things to do there. So you're a clerk. So in my clerkness, <laughs> went up to assistant manager. Just get them healed. So Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, you have authorized us to be your witnesses. Lord Jesus, you said, listen, I'm leaving here. But greater works that you saw me do, are you going to do? Now, Lord Jesus, we're not seeing that today, at least not widespread. You know, we'll see a video here or there, but we're not seeing it widespread. And you said to me, by the Holy Spirit, it's simply because we're not doing it. We're not stepping out. We're not asking if we're authorized to do it. Hmm. But, you gave us this message, and now we know how to get it done. Right, yes, Lord. All we got to do is ask, Lord, have you authorized me to take care of this? Mm -hmm. And then you will show us what to do. You'll tell us what to do right then and there. And we can get it done. And then give you the glory. Yeah. We won't go start a ministry because we don't know if the next person we're authorized to help or the next or the next. So we're learning, Lord, to follow you. We're learning you. Your word says, even as we spoke uh, December 31st during our service, Lord, we will know as we follow on to know you. There are some things we will never know until we follow on to know you. So, Father, you gave us your word today. And you expect us to get people healed. There are some people who have financial problems that you want to bless them by our hands. We can just take their hand and just pray just as you give us. Proclaim just as you give. Declare. Speak. With the authority. Because we're authorized to do it. There are so many instances that, that have become a part of our lives when we saw people hurting and we saw people confused and so much, but we didn't do anything. We didn't realize, Lord. Some of us really didn't realize that we could just ask, Father, have you authorized me to do this? Have you given me the authority? And if you say it, that demon, those devils, they already know we got to go. We got to go now. Father, thank you so much for always making everything so clear to us. This message just made it just clear. Now, Lord, I'm not naive. I understand that we're not all just going to bum rush the world and, and just get them all healed. I understand there will be people who will be a little embarrassed at first and some people who have low self-esteem. Father, we get in the way of our miracles and many times we get in the way of other people's miracles as well. So, Father, I ask, will you please, for us, just help us. Some may need to start with something small by just simply hearing a co-worker say that they have a headache. And Lord, let their faith in you build up and their belief in themselves about who you have authorized them to be per instance to move forward in you. Lord, do that for all of us, we pray. 
and I'm not praying this to see if it will happen. I literally have zero doubt anywhere in my mind, heart, soul, spirit, and if possible, even my body. No doubt that you will do this for all of us here and those listening and watching because this is your will. This is what you spoke, so this is what I preached. And I believe every word of it. And I know we're going to hear testimonies from those we have prayed for. And they're going to give you the glory and honor. Your name will be magnified just like it was when that one man beat up those seven men because they were not authorized to use your name, Lord Jesus. So, Father, thank you. Thank you. You've authorized us to use your name. And you're going to lead and guide us. That's why you said in all our ways acknowledge you. Not just go after a demon or go after a sickness. We don't know if you want us to speak to it, to lay hands or, or to, to wave or whatever you want us to do. So that's why in all of our ways we must acknowledge you. And then when you give us what to do, you've authorized us to do it. Just like when Peter was in the boat and he said, Jesus, is that you tell me to come? Jesus said, come. That authorized him to literally walk on the water. So when we get instructions from you, we are wise because we fear you. We take your instructions to heart and we will do what you say do. You will authorize us every single time you speak. We've been authorized. Every single time. Yeah. And so now, Father, we're, we're going to be praying all day long. We're going to be praying more than we've prayed before. Yeah. Lord, have you authorized me to take care of this? We hear somebody complaining about their husband. We hear somebody complaining about their wife. Lord, have you authorized me to give them wisdom? Have you authorized me to give them understanding? Have you authorized me to help this person? Have you authorized me? Oh, Lord, I thank you. We're going to, to increase our relationship with you and decrease the space between us. We're going to be closer, Lord. We're going to be closer with you. And so we thank you and bless you and praise you. And we give you glory. And Lord, let us know that you love everybody. And if you authorized us, you want to heal them or bless them or help them because you love them. And perfect love casts out all fear. So if we're thinking of your love, we won't be afraid to approach them. Because your perfect love casts out the fear about approaching them to get them healed. So thank you, Lord. We give you glory, praise, and honor for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit just said to me, they're clapping because they agree with that prayer. And because we all agree with that, that means we all, of course, prayed it together. And God heard it. And he's going to answer it. You'll see. You'll see in your lives. You'll see. You'll see. Smith Wigglesworth. His wife woke him up and said, the children are sick. They can't go to school. He went downstairs, prayed for him, instantly healed. They went to school. We have this authority. Ask God to authorize you. Now, before we go, if you just bow your heads just briefly for me, there may be somebody here who says, I'm not saved. I'm not authorized by Jesus. I'm not authorized by God because I've not given Jesus my life. Yeah. Or I did, but... I have strayed away. Be it a little or a lot, Jesus wants us back. So don't think that you've been saved for um, a short time and then you left him and it's been so long. No, 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 no. Jesus wants you back. He wants you back right this very second, right this very moment. I promise you, he does. So all I want you to do, I'm not going to ask you to stand or come down here. I just want you to make the decision right now that yes, I want to give my life to God. Just take the time to make that decision. We haven't done anything in our lives, whether it's going to the restroom or going to the movies. We have never made any moves without making a decision first. So make the decision first right now. Do you want Jesus to have your life? 
That's, that's all. Do I want him to have my life? Yeah, I, I, he doesn't have it right now. Or I need to renew that relationship with him. Make the decision to do that. Okay, next, the only thing I want you to do is very briefly just signify. Just signify right now with all heads bowed, all eyes closed here. I just want you to signify it by just simply putting your hand up and putting it back down. Say, I'm one. Just put your hand up and put it back down. That's all. All right? And for those listening and watching as well. So now this is what I want you to do. I'm going to lead you in prayer. In other words, we're going to be praying together. You repeat what I say, but it's coming from your heart. And I want you to just give your life to God. That's it. Through Jesus Christ. So now, God is looking directly at you. And you'll be talking directly to him. So just simply repeat after me. But remember, you're just talking directly to God. And say, Father God... Right now, I come before you in the name of Jesus who died for me and who you raised from the dead. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. And Father, I want you to be my Father for real. Authorize me to do all you want me to do. I now belong to you. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God.